Race car simulators help train race car drivers off the track. They provide realistic visuals and sensations, bumps, jolts, swerves. Whatever movement you'd feel if you were sitting in the driver's seat of a real race car. This race car simulator can be programmed to produce a range of racing scenarios and weather conditions. It can replicate any car on any track. First, a computer-guided laser cuts many of the simulator's parts from steel sheets. After workers sand the rough areas, a machine reads the final shape with a laser to make sure the part meets specifications. If a part requires bending, it is done with a press. This is one of the side brackets for the driver's seat. The simulator's main structure is made primarily of steel tubing. They saw the lengths required. Then a computer-guided mill drills holes for the bolts that will later be used to attach the simulator's components. Once all the steel tubes are ready, a welder puts them in a jig to align them correctly for assembly. The structure's tubular parts are welded together. Then the worker adds the simulator's sheet steel parts and sprays the structure with industrial grade paint. Now they mount an audio speaker and amplifier for the vibration system. Motion controllers that move the steering wheel and driver's seat are also added. They install the power distribution block and a subcontroller for each of the two actuators. They install the cables required for the simulator's components and plug them into a USB hub. Then they install the computer and plug it into the USB hub as well. They cover the top of the structure with a textured aluminum panel. They bolt the bottom of the actuators to the structure and plug them into the subcontrollers inside. Then they mount the driver's seat and bolt the top of the actuators to the back of it. A worker installs the seat belt along with the spring mechanism that yanks the belt back when you hit the brakes. They close in the sides of the main structure with aluminum panels. Next, they assemble the simulator's three pedals, gas, brakes, and clutch and mount the clutch mechanism to it. The pedal assembly is installed to the base of the steering frame. They mount the dashboard to the top of the frame. It's made of carbon fiber and contains the computer and audio controls. They attach the steering frame to the main structure. Then they assemble the steering wheel. Inside its base is a circuit board that controls the buttons on the wheel and gear shift. It's called the shift paddle. They mount the shift paddle to the base, then flip it over to attach the wheel. Next, workers assemble the display frame. It holds the simulator's three monitors and three front speakers. Then they roll in the rest of the simulator and plug the monitors and speakers into the computer. Finally, the steering wheel is mounted to the dash. It snaps in and out, allowing the driver to easily switch between steering wheel models. The simulator is run through several days of test drives before it ships out. Amusement parks also purchase these simulators to offer visitors a race car driving experience.
They can even link multiple simulators together to race against each other in virtual replicas of the world's most famous racetracks. 